that bigger. Okay. Hi guys. How are ya? I think it's working. I think I got enough light. Maybe, maybe, maybe. don't know welcome you are in my basement studio right now and I am a ceramics technician and one of the instructors at 171 and to bring you a little bit of clay time I'm gonna show you how to make a squish dish that's what I'm calling this project we're really gonna just squish the clay into a big piece of foam and we're gonna make something that kind of looks maybe like this when we're done of course I don't have a kiln here, I'll have to wait until we get back to work to fire our stuff, but these are just some of the small ones that I have at home. There's more in the studio. And if you want to really do this yourself, if you don't have stuff at home to, to play along, um, we're going to have an urban arts crawl at the end of August on the 28th, and you can come and try this yourself. Anyone can come and do it, as young as six, as old as we can get. It's pretty easy. I think it's kind of fun. You can make a bunch of them. And they're, they're, they're cute. They're functional. They could be trinket dishes. They could be to put your vitamins on in the morning. You could use it as a little salt pig next to the stove. Soap dish. You name it, you could try and use it uh, for whatever you want to do. But to get started, we're going to need to do some cutting of clay. I'm going to stand up. I hope you guys can still see me all right. I have my laptop over here so I can watch at the same time. It's a little bizarre. But right now I'm just going to cut some clay. I like to use um, these wire cutoff tools. They usually come as strung wire, but I've switched mine out to be just fishing line because it doesn't fray. So, if you have some fishing line at home, you can cut some clay. I got my block of clay here. We want to start with maybe half an inch. I'm going to roll it out. So, on my table, I have cement board, which is nice because it doesn't stick to the clay. If you were doing this at home, you might want to put something down on your countertop, like a sheet or a piece of canvas. Um, if you don't mind doing it on your countertop, you can definitely go for it. Stone countertops are excellent for rolling out clay. You just don't want it to be too wet, otherwise it's going to stick. So to help me roll this out evenly, I just have some paint stick stirrers. These are for five gallon buckets. Rulers would work. If you have any dowels, you could put those down. That's just going to keep my rolling pin from squishing my clay too much. Um, so this is one that I, I brought from work. I brought a good deal of things from work to kind of sequester myself at home and um, do clay demos for you so that you can have a little bit of art in your life while we're, we're all kind of home. But there are other things in your house that you could use if you don't have something specifically for clay. Just about anything could be a clay tool. So if you had a bottle or an actual rolling pin or uh, a pipe, something round and solid that you can press down on and use to help you roll out the clay. Doesn't matter if it's meant for clay, you can make it do what you need it to. So when I roll, I like to kind of do a little bit at a time. I don't want to smash it down real hard. Oh, my husband says the volume's good. That's good. Hi, Caitlin. <laughs> so there's about a 20 second lag. I'll try and keep my eye on the comments, but um, hopefully if I do this right, we'll have some time at the end and I can take some of your questions. I'll go back in the chat and see some of the questions if I miss it. But um, I like to flip my clay around and do a little bit at a time. That way I can kind of spread it out so that it doesn't get too flat in one direction. And you got to be a little bit strategic about it. If you want 
it to be a long piece, then you're going to work from front to back. If you want it to be wide, then you can work side to side. But it doesn't take much. My preferred method is actually to, to throw a slap, but um, I'm actually using my old kitchen table from my apartment, and it's not all that sturdy. So it kind of makes the table wiggle quite a bit, but that's okay. Now, I'm going to use a silicone rubber rib. Um, that's what I like to use to smooth my clay, but a credit card or a hotel key works just as well. You just drag it across the clay with a little bit of pressure, and that's going to help to smooth any inconsistencies out. Doesn't take much. And because I'm rolling on this kind of smooth surface, there's not too much that I have to, to smooth out. But if you make a mistake, let's say you're using a stamp or you have texture that you don't like, this is going to be kind of your eraser. And you can use this to get rid of whatever marks you didn't mean to make. So that'll do. This also helps to compress the clay and make it a little bit stronger. So I'm going to use a variety of tools. and. Because we're kind of doing this on the fly, and if you're doing it at home, you might not have your clay tools, there are other things that you can use. Um, so I have a good kind of stash of cookie cutters. For any of my uh, pastry chefs or bakers out there, you have clay tools. You just didn't know that they were meant for clay. I like this set because it's, you know, graduated and it has a kind of flowery side and a smooth side as well. Um, I have some pastry cutters and then I have just some regular cookie cutters. I'm always kind of on the hunt for these. Walmart has a good set. Wegmans has excellent cookie cutters and especially seasonal ones. Um, our friend Lee brought these to the studio and they're they're just great for making some of the dishes that we've We've tried this technique out with, um, and there's itty bitty ones if you wanted to do added texture on top of here. Um, fondant cutters are excellent for clay as well, but you could make your own shape if you wanted to. So I have these pieces of craft foam that are left over from a project that I'm working on for something else, and these are perfect for just kind of laying out right on the clay and cutting it out. But before I do any of my cutting out, I'm going to try and do some texture first. So again, you can use what you have. Um, bubble wrap makes a great texture tool. <laughs> um, there's one that I got packaging for. I think it was in a box of chocolate and it has like this honeycomb texture on it. We'll maybe try that out today. That could be fun. Any of your grandmother's doilies that aren't sacred heirlooms are really great for rolling into clay. Um, we have a pretty good collection of them at the studio, but they make nice clean impressions. They're big, but you could only use, you could use just like a section of it if you wanted to. Um, I think this one we cut off of a dress because it had some nice geometric patterns without being too flowery. Um, that bottle that you might have used to roll out your clay, maybe it had some netting on it to keep it from clanking together from your liquor store purchases. That makes excellent netting texture on the clay. Uh, we have felt placemat. That works well. This one we've cut into a strip, um, and our friend Martha used this in her mug workshop the other day. But excellent for rolling out clay. If you want a really tedious job, you can peel some cardboard apart and get this corrugated rib texture. That looks really cool with clay too. So I'm going to try a couple of these out. Anybody want to see one in particular? See if it pops up in any of the comments. I mean the lace always looks nice, but I'm doing this for you guys, so let me know what you want to see. Maybe we'll try this bubble wrap. Not quite sure which size I'm going to use quite yet, so I'll do a little section of it 
and see what it does. So I'm going to use my rolling pin again, and I don't want to smash this into the clay. I just want to do a little bit to get it impressed, enough to make a mark, but not so much that I'm actually going to cut the clay. So I'm going to roll that direction. I'm going to roll that direction. I'd usually be a little bit more aggressive with this, but because I'm trying to use this piece of clay for a couple pieces, I'm going to be a little more gentle. There we go. This is a fun part. Just kind of peel off that texture. Yeah, I like that. That looks pretty good. All right. Everybody see all right? Because I can move, move you a little bit closer if we need to. Um, let's try a circle. All right. So this is my biggest pastry cutter. Um, it's excellent for doing this. And what I like to do is I like to actually cut through a piece of plastic. So again, go raid your pantry. Find some saran wrap in the kitchen. Um, this is going to be perfect for cutting out a nice smooth edge. So you don't need a huge piece and we can reuse this a couple of times. I'm just going to lay it right on top of my clay over that texture. I'm going to use my cutter straight through the plastic. It might cut it, but that's not a problem. So I'm going to press down and cut right through. Sometimes you got to give it a little wiggle. I'm going to peel that plastic off. And the reason I want to do this is, one, it kind of helps keep that texture from getting smushed. And it gives a really nice, soft, pillowy edge. And it just looks like a more finished, refined piece. I'm going to move this now. You want to handle your clay in the same way that you would touch pastry dough or pie, dough, pie crust. So here comes the fun part. Well, I think all of it's fun, but this is especially fun. I have a big piece of foam cushion. If you have a pillow at home that is ugly and you don't mind getting clay dust on, that would be a good thing to try and do this, this squish part with. But it needs to have a little bit of um, girth to it so that you can push down and it springs back up. You don't want it to be super duper soft because then it's not really going to do what we need it to. But you know, this is still squishy. So to keep that texture in place, I'm going to put my, my plastic down again, and I need to use something to do the squishing. So I don't have lots of options. I kind of wandered around the house to find things that have solid smooth surfaces. So this is a cap off of some laundry detergent. Um, another one that I found was the lid to a candle. That's nice and smooth. That'll be kind of good to press into. Um, actually, my, my metal tin for my little baby cookie cutters, that's excellent for pushing into. And I have been planning to do this, um, of course, for August, but I've been playing around with it in the studio. And I had a couple of pieces that I've already made out of clay. So they're bisque, bisque stamps. But they're great for squishing. If you have any spare 2x4s laying around, you can cut those up. You just kind of sand the edges a little bit, and then you can squish that down. We'll maybe use those in a little bit. So I cut those earlier this week to try and use some of these. Um, so whatever I make today, hopefully I'm going to be using for a program that we call, uh, it's called Road Scholars. And People from all over the country come and learn how to work with clay for two days at 171 and they do other things at like the Corning Museum of Glass and Heritage Village and we were supposed to see them in April we're not gonna see them quite yet um, we're not gonna see them in May either but we're looking forward to the fall when we might be able to do this because they're gonna do wheel throwing and they're gonna do some hand building and then we're gonna raku our clay. And I'll be happy to tell you about that a little bit later. So let's get back to the squishing. So I'm going to use this laundry cup. Um, we'll see if it, it makes a mark, but 
That's another reason to put that saran wrap back over your clay so that it doesn't mar it too much. And I'm going to aim right for the middle. Now, the trick to doing our squish dishes, I haven't gone super big with it. Uh, some of my friends in the studio were trying it out. I found that it needs to be somewhat close in size to your piece of clay. So I wouldn't recommend doing like a quarter in the middle as your squisher because I don't think the clay is going to move as much. So this is, you know, close in size, but it's still small enough that I'm going to have clay that's going to come up over the edge. So let's try it out. I'm just going to push my hand on top and I'm going to press straight down and kind of wiggle it around as I go. You don't have to smash it, but you do need to press fairly firm. And then I can peel that plastic right off. And there we go. This one's kind of nice and deep. That would be good for, for like a little salt cellar. Um, and I'm going to finish the edges just a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of water on my fingers and just kind of smooth the edge. I don't want to use a sponge because that's going to make the fine particles in the surface of the clay kind of come out and make it rough and coarse. And a little bit of water will do it. The clay that I'm using is um, our wood fire clay body. So it's going to get real hot. could go into the wood kiln, but we also use it for our raku firings, which is a low firing temperature. Another trick is to use that plastic wrap and put it right around the edge that you're working on and run your finger over it. And that helps to smooth it out. But because this clay is pretty fresh, I don't have to worry too much about it. And then I didn't put anything out on the, on the back. Um, if you wanted to do double-sided texture, you could certainly try it. You can see what that looks like. So I'm just going to set that aside for now and go for another one. we got some more clay left. So let's see. Put this down. Use that card again and kind of erase that bubble texture. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. <laughs> We're figuring it out. All right. There we go, nice and smooth. So I rolled the clay out. It's mm, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. You want to leave a little bit of body there so that whatever texture you're putting into the clay has enough to embed itself but not make it so thin that it's going to rip and tear. So I think I'm going to try this corrugated texture next. Okay, so I'm going to lay the clay on top of the texture and then I'm going to roll the clay into it. See how that works. Back and forth. I'm going to rotate it so that I can go the other direction. And I like to do any of this rolling standing up. It just gives me a little bit more pressure and leverage so that I can control the pressure a little bit more. Let's flip this over. I'll peel that off. Ooh, yeah, that looks nice. All right. So, because this is kind of rectangly, let's try one of these pieces. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to freehand this because I don't have anything rectangly to trace around. I'm going to grab my knife out of my pocket. I'm going to get that clay off of there. So I'm just going to cut kind of freehand a rectangle. That's what's nice about these, is you can pretty much do whatever you feel like. If you wanted to make that more exciting, a different irregular shape, you could do that. Lots of possibilities with this. So before I squish this one, I think I'm going to try and smooth the edges. So I'm just going to flip it over. 
clay is nice and soft, so it's pretty easy to, to smooth out. And I like to kind of press in the corners a little bit. That way it doesn't stay sharp. All right, let's bring that cushion back over. I'm gonna lay that down. All right, so this is just a one by six that I cut and I had scrap laying around. You can maybe see there's a shelf behind me that has some leftover things from doing house projects. So I'm gonna lay that down. Oh, I forgot my plastic. Let's do that part. Where'd it go? I lost my saran wrap. That's all right. I got another piece right here. All right, so we'll lay that plastic down. Oh, Jeff's here. Hi, Jeff. Look at you using all this technology. All right, so I have that block of wood pressed kind of where I want it. I'm going to give it a squish. Squish and press. What I've found is when I do kind of these larger pieces of clay, I get this kind of organic wiggly edge. I really like how that turns out. I peel that plastic off. And there we go. We want to be kind of gentle with this, especially if your clay is on the thin side, because it's going to want to change shape pretty easily. So you might have to, once you take it off the cushion, kind of take it off and reshape it a little bit. Use a little bit of water again and just kind of set it on the rim there, smooth it out. Now I think this would make a pretty good sushi dish. Um, I don't eat sushi, but I can appreciate all of the fine pottery and ceramic ware that sushi is presented on. I think that looks pretty good. Now when I do these squish dishes, I don't put anything on the bottom, but if you wanted to, you could roll a coil and kind of put it around the, the bottom edge. I think it's fine to leave it flat. You just might need to go back and kind of give it a, a little bit of a press if you find that it's changed its shape at all. All right, bring out my wear board. Set that to the side. Okay. Anybody have requests of what they want to see? Because I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to do one more. And then I will take... No, i got time to do some more. I wore my watch today. I haven't worn my watch in two weeks. I gotta keep track of time today. So I have this little one. Let's see what we can do with this guy. Now aside from large pieces of texture that you could roll in, you could also use some stamps if you have them. Um, rubber stamps work pretty good. I have kind of an assortment of my clay stamps, quite the collection. Um, they're fun to buy. They're fun to use. <laughs> so, gotta tell you, I have my fair share of them. Um, but I also have a bunch of these silicone rollers. These are from the cake decorating aisle. Um, they're excellent for clay. So, if you have one of these, give them a shot. But, I also have rubber stamps. You know, this is my, my whole alphabet. I got the rubber ones that you'd probably use for ink and scrapbooking, but they work for clay. Not a problem. So I grabbed one of my uh, clay rollers. The company that makes this is called MKM. Um, they make all of these really great wooden stamps. I like to go for the ones that are double-ended um, because you get more free money. And I probably would have gotten a few more if we had gone to NSICA, which is the National Clay Conference. But unfortunately, that got called off, understandably. But 
is going to be in Richmond this year. And at the clay conference, they have all of these vendors, including the guys who make these stamps. And you can go and try them out and see their new designs. But I did get just a bunch of like discontinued ones that they put up on their website a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to have to try those out too. So I'm going to use this one. I'm not sure which shape I'm going for yet, so I'm just going to roll the whole piece of clay. Trick with these rollers is you just have to be kind of decisive about it to keep the pressure nice and even. You can see kind of that nice star effect. That looks really great with some transparent glazes like a celadon. Let's check out my cookie cutters. What do we got? Will that work? Try that. Ooh, I got a flower. We could try that. Let's try a flower. Okay, back to the saran wrap. You don't have to use this. I just like the way the edges look. So I kind of go back to, back to that. I'm going to place this in here. Now, if you were going to be a little bit more economical about it, you could probably fit uh -huh. another cookie cutter over here. Press that through. And of course, if you don't have these cookie cutters, use a knife. Um, another good tool, pin tool. Butter knives work. Um, this isn't like super sharp, this is just a fettling knife. You can use that to cut things out. And then peel that plastic off. Set that extra to the side. There we go. So there's my little flower. I'm going to flip it over, work those edges again. Bring this guy back. Okay, so this is a little baby one. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the end of my rolling pin. So this is just going to be a real small one, but maybe that'll give us kind of a, a nice squish. Let's try it. Roll it around. plastic off. There we go. It's kind of deep, so maybe we could fan that out a little bit. Oh yeah, I like that. Now as it is right now, it could be a nice little tea light holder, but we got to remember, clay is going to shrink. This stuff's going to shrink hmm, maybe about 12%. So it's not going to be this big when it's done. So if I want it to be a tea light holder, I might go for a little bit bigger. But it's still pretty cute. I'm going to make sure that that stands up, though. There we go. Set that with the others. All right. So I got some scraps over here. I can reuse those for something else. And rather than rolling out another slab, I have some already prepared. There we go. This is close to a cooking show that I'm going to get. <laughs> I rolled this out last night, but it's still nice and soft. I'm going to use that rib again. Smooth this out. Alright. So, hmm. We 
guys aren't giving me a whole lot of suggestions. I'm just going to go for it. Um, let's do a combination. I'll try this knitting. Just lay that in there. Get it a little bit closer to the edge. All right, there we go. Use the rolling pin, press that in there. Try and go a couple different directions. It's not going to take much. And then we're going to peel that up. There we go. Nice. Let's use our rectangle. Plastic. Now I think these graduated ovals are cake decorating tools as well, but they are perfect. We have lots of circles in the studio, but not so many ovals. So when Lee brought these in, it was pretty exciting. Those uh, squishers that I showed you earlier, I made those from using these ovals. I cut out the pieces of clay, and of course because the clay shrinks, they're smaller. So they're excellent for this exact project. I'm going to give that a cut. Set this to the side for now. All right, there's my oval. Kind of a nice, simple pattern. A little bit of water. Hi, Dre. <laughs> Get to see everybody, virtually at least. All right. Boom. Okay. Where did my squishers go? Oh, they're over here. Still trying to get used to my studio, so <laughs> kind of moved things around a bit. So let's see which size fits. So if I went with the smaller squisher, I'd have more of a clay border around here. If I went with the larger one, it's not going to kind of flip up quite as much. I like seeing it when it flips, so I'm going to go for the smaller one. Keep that texture from getting kind of mushed. I'm going to put that plastic back. I'm going to arrange that squisher and give it a squish. I found if you kind of rock it back and forth and give it a good wiggle, it kind of helps to embed it pretty distinctly. <laughs> Thanks, Martha. Um, so I'm going to roll this edge out just a little bit, just so it's a little easier to get to. This could make a nice soap dish. Now in these days of soap fever, we got to make sure that everybody's washing their hands. This is how we could help a little bit. Use that soap and... <laughs> oh, Chris wants to know if I made the oval. Yes, I made the oval using all of these graduated cutters a while ago because I, you know, was thinking about doing this exact project as a class um, and that's what we're going to do for Urban Arts Crawl in August but I knew that if I had some squishers to work with this would be easier so eventually I'm going to make some that are circular and some that are square or rectangle so that we have kind of a, an assortment of them um, but of course if you were doing this on your own you don't have to have a clay squisher it's convenient but um, anything will work really. If it's smooth and it's fairly stable, um, 
you can use just about anything to give it a good squish. So that's what that one looks like. Should we try a bigger one? See how it goes. My coworker Christy saw one that I did for our our event photo. She said she liked it, so maybe we'll make another one. I'm going to use the card again to kind of scrape it. Now if you get clay that's kind of stuck on your tools, you want to clean that off so that it doesn't get stuck in your fresh clay. You don't want those crumblies. Yeah, Carissa, I call the, the oval ones squishers. It's a very technical term. Um, whatever you're using to press into the clay to get that shape, that's a squisher. All right, that works. <sighs> Let's do some lace. All right, I like this one because it's more of like an arabesque pattern, not quite so florally. And then just lightly press that on with my fingers. Go back to the rolling pin. And roll this in. This is another tool that I have. This is called a pony roller. Um, if I have any ravioli makers, you might use this with your uh, pasta dough. But of course, for my purposes, it's a clay tool. I like to use this when I have edges that I might have missed rolling in with the bigger rolling pin. There we go. And we do it on time. All right. Maybe this will be our last one, and then I'll take some questions if anybody's got them. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, if you're not certain how well your texture is going to come out, you can peel just a little bit away before you peel the whole thing. That way, if you have to put it back down, it's a little bit easier to manage so that you don't end up with a double kind of exposure. So here's a piece of craft foam. Um, again, I'm using it for a different project, but... This is kind of one of the leftovers, and it's perfectly fine to use as a template. So I'm just going to press that or lay that right on top of the clay. I like to trace before I cut because if I make a mistake, it's a little bit easier to correct. There we go. We're going to go all the way around. So after... After this live demo, I have a time-lapse video that we'll post so that you can see everything that I've just shown you sped up. You can get the Cliff Notes version of it. Not with any of the actual directions, but if you're a visual person, sometimes it's fun to just revisit and see again. And of course, this video will be up on our, our page, so if you need to come back and, and look at it again with the actual directions that I'm talking about, you could do that. All right, get my knife back. Now, if you're on a more delicate surface at home, just keep in mind that you could scratch it, so um, you might need to have something underneath your work. Drywall boards are excellent for rolling clay out and working on. Um, I have a, a good stash of them. I was making myself some wear boards last night because we have some leftover from random house projects. So you just kind of cut them, you bind the edges with some duct tape, and then you have a surface to work on. That's what we use in the studio to put all of our work on the shelves. They're lightweight and, you know, if something happens to them, you don't feel quite so upset because they're pretty darn cheap. Cut that all the way around. This 
This is a little bit more of a elaborate shape. So it takes just a bit longer. We're going to peel that up. Okay. I'm going to do the edge trick with the plastic wrap. I'm just going to run my finger right along the edges. It's going to help smooth it out. Because I cut this with my knife as opposed to a cookie cutter, I don't have that pillowy edge like I did with the other ones. So this will help. Um, now I think, ah, pizza box. Yep, Cindy, that, that, that would work. To work with, to keep your clay, <laughs> kind of store it too, to cut around, lots of purposes. I'm gonna peel that up and do the other side. Well, like I suggested before, if you really wanted to go nuts, you could roll a texture on this other side. What I would do though is, once you flip this over, um, you might wanna put plastic on the first texture side so that it doesn't get distorted too much. It will get distorted a little bit if you're pressing from this second side, but that'll kind of help keep it intact. All right, that looks good. Happy with that. All right. I'm gonna put this right down on the foam. What should I use as my squisher? Hmm. Should we go for square? Let's try it. We've been using squish shapes that uh, kind of correspond to the cutout shape, but let's see what it looks like with without that plastic. There we go. All right, get that where you want it. I'm happy with that position. There we go. We got a square flower. Nice. So you could go back and kind of pinch the edges. You could add some more decoration along this, this edge. Lots of options. I like how that came out. That works. Let's set that to the side. So you guys can see what we just made. So that's just about all my time. That went fast. Um, so some things to kind of mention to you. Uh, next Wednesday, I will be doing a wheel demo. So I'm gonna be over there on my, my kick wheel that's been waiting for me since my junior year of high school. And I'm gonna show you some basics of throwing techniques and I will be taking requests. If you want to see something in particular, let me know in the comments and I can give that a shot. Um, it's going to go, it's going to go fast like today did. Um, Caitlin wants to know, could you use this technique to make larger scale items like dinner plates or platters? You know, I think you could. I, I think you have to have a good correspondence between, um, Thing that you're using to squish and the size of your clay. So you don't want there to be too much of a difference between, let's say, your plate and the circle that you're using to squish with, so that you don't have too much of a rim. Um, I haven't gone super big with things, so we definitely would have to try it out before I could say, yes, that definitely works. <laughs> Lots of experimenting. Mm -hmm. um, you get pretty good at failing when you work with clay, so it would be fun to try. Um, other things to suggest, uh, our next Facebook Live uh, class will be on Saturday with Katie Jenks. She's gonna show you how to make a basket using magazine pages. So you're home, you probably got lots of paper goods waiting to get recycled. She's gonna show you how to make it into a functional thing and upcycle that that paper that might get tossed otherwise. We also have a ceramic show that's coming up in July. The deadline for that is May 8th. We've extended it so that we can 
encourage more people to apply. And what else we got? Oh, summer camps, the big thing. Those are on our website. So you can start to sign up for summer camps for your kiddos. There's lots of options. Each week has a different theme. We're going to have lots of fun doing that this summer. So sign up for those. Those go pretty quick. Um, so the earlier you do it, the better. And if you want to help contribute to help keep 171 running, because right now it's a little bit difficult. We're not there teaching in person. What you can do is buy a gift certificate now to use for a class later. So you can purchase those on our website and that's gonna kind of help keep us afloat while we're going. Um, we're, we're here, even though our doors aren't open, we're still here and we're moving forward with our initiative. So let me see if we have any more questions. Linda wants to know how thick the clay is. I started out with about a half inch slab. I rolled it out to about a quarter of an inch. If you had something with a lot of texture that you were trying to put in, you might want it to be just a little bit thicker so that it maintains its shape. But this is, I don't know if you can see that edge real well, but it's about a quarter of an inch. Hi Deb, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> so. That's, that's about it. I think I'm done with my time, so we hope to see you soon. I hope you're well, and tune in for Wheel next week. And you can see uh, our friend Martha do a, a demo in a couple weeks as well if you need some more clay. So see you soon. Thanks, guys.